Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jonna Williams. I am the assistant procurement officer for the design and construction unit at DPS. And I'll start with the first few slides. So we have programs designed for small businesses and also bid incentives to help with the award of contracts. So programs for small businesses include our small business initiative, SBI for construction, our mid-sized business initiative, MBI for construction. We have equal employment opportunity, EEO um, incentives on our contracts and apprentice utilization and bid preferences. So the program goal is designed to encourage small businesses to participate in city funded construction projects under $3 million in total cost. Some of the key points is your firm should be small and local within the six county region. And the programs are for exclusive for small business bidders. We have two tiers of the small business initiative, the SBI one and the SBI two. The SBI one, the total estimated cost for um, projects is under 2 million and it's per the small business um, size standards. SBI two is the project cost is less than 2 million and the standards are half the small business size standards. Next slide. So it's designed to increase um, small business and medium size, medium sized businesses as prime contractors for our city funded construction projects. And it ranges between 10 million and 20 million in total cost. For this is for the mid sized business initiative. And for this, we're looking for small to mid sized businesses, which are located in the six county region. And the MBI program is exclusive to the medium and small size bidders. The estimated project cost again is between 10 to 20 million dollars. And eligible bidders have the size limitation, which is one and a half times the small business size small business standard. For our equal employment opportunity, EEO bid incentives, uh, this program is a bid, bid incentive available on contracts for construction valued in size at $100,000 or more, and it's designated to increase the utilization of minority and women journey workers apprentices and laborers. So any bidder proposing to utilize minority and or women journey workers, apprentices and laborers on a contract for construction may apply for this incentive. The bidder must show it's a commitment to utilize minority and female workers in any of the three categories by completing a canvassing formula, which is submitted with your bid. For our, our apprentice utilization bid incentive, this is designed as an incentive for city prime contractors to utilize apprentices for construction projects. By apprentice, we mean a person who is sponsored into an apprenticeship training program by a contractor that is authorized by a union to sponsor apprentices. And two, these people will be enrolled in or graduated from a construction technology training program administered by the City Colleges of Chicago, or as in a graduate from a high school operated by Chicago Public Schools. This is also for contracts valued for more than $100,000, and it's an incentive for future contracts. It's a tiered incentive, so 5 to 10% of the work if five to excuse me, five to ten percent of the work is performed by an apprentice, an apprentice that will result 
and one half percent bid incentive. If 11 to 15 percent project area um, subcontractor work will result in a one percent bid incentive, and the bid incentives artificially reduce your bid price to give you hopefully an advantage to win the bid. That's all for me, so I will turn it over to Mike Judd. Thank you very much, Jana. Um, Jackie, did you want to go ahead and there we go? Okay. Okay. We just needed in PowerPoint, um, I mean, a presentation format. Yeah, there, there you go. All right, perfect. Well, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to present job order contracting on behalf of the city of Chicago. My name is Michael Judd. I'm a senior account manager representative for uh, procurement. And this is kind of the agenda of what we're going to be discussing today as far as job order contracting. Um, we're going to review the overview of what job order contracting is, what the job order contracting process looks like, some benefits to JOC if you're a prime contractor looking to get into one of the JOC programs or subcontractor looking to work with any prime contractors currently in a JOC program. Then we'll kind of touch the surface on how to bid as a prime contractor using some adjustment factors using our book and we'll get into that later on. With wrapping up key points and review of what we went over and then some open discussion at the very end. So, kind of a brief overview, uh, Jack has been around the city uh, since the 1990s but has been with the federal government since the mid 1980s. So, Jack has been around for quite a while. And it has grown. The city has used it a lot to the point where there are over 2,000 job order contracts issued nationwide with close to $2 billion worth of total volume construction ordered on an annual basis. So it's grown as a um, primary procurement method for a lot of departments across the country. And it is one of the procurement methods that the city of Chicago uses. A couple of awards in 2005. The uh, job order contracting program for the city of Miami won the NIGP award. And then locally here, Cook County received the NACO award for their use of the JOC program. So it is starting to branch out more and more. But what is job order contracting? Um, by definition, it's a firm fixed price. It's competitively bid and definite quantity delivery method designed to produce a large multi number traded jobs, repair and rehabilitation projects as well as new minor work quickly. So we like to break that down into three different definitions for the ease of conversation. The first one is the firm fixed price. That is the prices out of the construction task catalog that are pre-priced before the contract is even awarded. That's how you as the contractor would bid on the contract, which takes us to the adjustment factors where if you're looking at the construction contract and the construction ta task catalog, you would identify your adjustment factors per those fixed prices about how you want to adjust your bid based on those prices in the book. And then finally, it's an indefinite quantity. So there are no projects specifically identified at the time of bid. However, the contract is for a fixed term and has a potential maximum dollar value. Some delivery methods that the city has, obviously they have in-house trade, traditional bid, term agreements, things like that. And then here's job order contracting that we're talking about today. It's not meant to replace any procurement method. However, it's just another tool that the city of Chicago tends to use quite frequently to help them push work along. So kind of the in general five step process in job order contracting once you. Get down into the 1st 1, we mentioned it was kind of like an IDIQ where there's an indefinite delivery but a maximum potential volume. You can have more than one job. So I go you you went in in and out. Something happened and we lost the sound. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. I can't, hear, I can't hear you now. Um, is, can you start this slide over from the beginning of what you were saying? Because it kind of went in and out. Sure. This slide here. Yes. Construction projects. Um, the owner will call you for a joint skill meeting where then they will request a proposal from you after you've developed a detailed scope of work. Then you would develop your proposal for the owner using the construction task catalog inside of our proprietary e gordian based software, where then the owner would review your proposal, make sure that it's accurate per the scope of work, and then issue you the job order where normal construction activities occur thereafter. So it is a very expedited process. It typically takes about 35 to 45 days because it's a performance based contract. So job order contracts, once the minimum value is reached on each jack, the future work is really. Based on how you're performing. So number one is your responsiveness as the contractor. It's rated from way at the beginning at the joint scale meeting through the project development phase all the way through construction. So pretty much start up to close out there. Project development phase, there's specific criteria such as scope de definition, timely and accurate price proposals, engagement during that process. And on the construction side, it's timely startups, effective management of the work crew and subcontractors, and then ensuring the project is construction according to the client specifications. Ultimately, you want to have success in developing that partnership with the owner. And it really depends on how accurate your adjustment factor is at the time of bid and the quality of staff that you have. So these are the specific measurables. Quality price proposals, timely price proposals that are submitted on time or before the due date, timely construction, which is rapid mobilization, adherence to agreed upon construction schedules, things like that. Quality construction, which is good quality construction throughout the entire project. And then the achievement of the MWBE goals, because there are compliance goals on each job contract. And then finally, achievement of self-performance goals. You want to achieve those that are set forth in the contracts as well. So some benefits to Jock as a prime contractor, it can be very profitable. Uh, profit is a function of volume. And as I touched on before, volume is driven by performance. So if you perform very well as a contractor, you're going to be assigned more work because ultimately the department needs to get work done. Ultimately, then, as you get more projects, that's more overhead and profit that you build in your portfolio. And ultimately, that profit is a function of that. Jack ultimately, because of that, you do not have to chase the next project. The next project will just keep coming to you because it's an indefinite delivery project. You can develop that long term relationship with the city where it becomes non adversarial and you can develop that partnership where you get that familiarity so that you can bid on that contract again. And finally, it's professionally rewarding. There's different types of projects, even though you may, you might find that different departments have different complete scopes of work. However, each department has their own specific projects, so they're going to vary in scope. And it gives you the ability to provide input during that scope development, so it's professionally rewarding. As far as subcontractors are concerned, the benefits for subcontractors is that, as I mentioned, there's no projects identified at the time of the. They also have M and W B E participation goals that they must hit. Which leads to increased subcontracting opportunities because they have to utilize your subcontracting community. There's a simplified procurement process. Contractor. You can be on multiple projects at multiple sites simultaneously as well. So that's just something to keep in mind as you work towards developing that relationship. There are a variety of methods that the subcontractors can provide a quote to the general and the general typically asks in a certain format how they would like to receive that. These are the three that we have found that they typically ask for. You can provide a lump sum quote. You might be asked to provide a lump sum quote with material breakdown. And then obviously 
they might want you to provide that lump sum quote with the material breakdown and CSI numbers from the construction task catalog that they're bound to. If they ask for that, that does not mean you're bound to the prices in the CTC. You do not have to accept or join in that work. That's just something to keep in mind. As bids go out on the street, you may want to download those specifications so you get familiar with what that CTC looks like. And then finally, as I mentioned, Jock is a performance-based contracting system that requires the high-quality construction. That's where generals who typically might not be, for example, in MEPs, they might be a carpentry GC. That's where they're going to look to you to try to get that high-quality construction at. So those are some of the opportunities that subcontractors have with current. the umbrella job order contracting contract, where, as I mentioned, the owner would advertise this jock. Contractors would submit their bids based on the CTC, and then ultimately procurement would issue you that umbrella job order contracting contract. Once you're awarded that contract, that's where those several projects, as you see in part two, where the department will ask you to procure individual projects, maybe some in all, like, as I mentioned in here, project A, B, and C at the same time, which leads to subcontracting opportunities. So when you download the specification, book, book one is the instructions to bidders and execution documents. Book two are the general conditions and special conditions. Book three is the CTC. Book four are the technical specs that tie to book three. And then finally, book, book five is if the client has their certain specifications, they'll include that in the solicitation as well. So we go over books one and two pretty heavily in pre-bids. I would suggest the next job contract that is out, you join one of those pre-bids and download those specifications so you get familiar with it. But we'll be going into book three, um, which there typically is a link in procurement to click, which will take you to PDFs of it. And what it is, it's a catalog of pre-priced construction tasks that allows you as the contractor to your adjustment factor to where it needs to be. The prices in the CTC include local labor, equipment, and material costs, and it's customized specifically for the city of Chicago and their standards. So it is a local construction task catalog book, and they're fixed for the entire duration of the contract. So a lot of questions that we've had is, how do you deal with market inflations, things like that? Your adjustment factor, once you bid, that gets updated yearly to help combat that. So as you look through the CTC, this is the screenshot of what each PDF page typically looks like. As I mentioned, it's formatted in CSI master format. In this case, it's curbs, gutters, sidewalks, and driveways. And in there, you'll see it includes two saw cuts at each end, things like that. There's modifiers, which is pretty much an economy of scale. Just like if you go to Costco, if you buy in bulk, you're buying at a less dollar value. That's that's how construction works as well. So that's how the CTC is set up. For up to a small quantity, you can add. If you're doing a large quantity and there's modifiers, then there will be a deduct modifier per that square footage or linear footage unit cost. program. And then finally, the prices include the labor material and equipment for total direct unit cost installation, which is $7.18, and then the demolition price, which is $3.23 per linear foot. So when you see that, and you're bidding as a job contractor to prime on one of these contracts, there's pretty much four steps that we advise during the pre-bid contractors to do. Number one is you want to determine your direct costs. So what that means Um, you want to make sure that you have completeness and clarity with that. So what that means is you want to review the price against your direct costs for accomplishing the work. Um, the prices in the CTC do not include subcontractor overhead and profit. So what that means is you have to add that on top of what you're building in your proposal. And then ultimately, it depends on the amount of self-performance you have. If you need to cover your subcontractor's overhead and profit, you need to add specific margins for that. That would lead to step two, which is bonding insurance, et cetera. Um, main overhead is your staffing. 
and then how much would it cost to employ that and how that ties to your normal working hours, which goes to step three, which is you want to, you're going to have to supply two, two adjustment factors for normal working hours during the normal day and then overtime for non normal working hours. You must cover both of those with direct costs, overhead, and profit, and you should not exclude any tasks. And then step four, you want to specify equal employment opportunities. These contracts is based on the lowest award criteria figure. So this is a general example. What I like to give during these workshops is let's say you have You build a proposal from the CTC at a flat rate of one, and that goes to $75,746. So then you would simply divide that 82,000 by the 75, and then you would have a markup, an adjustment. Our specific steps in jack contracts that are out on the street. And also we have our website to help you do that as well as we Mike, I don't know if it's just me, but uh, it seems like your mic is going in and out uh, throughout this. Uh, I don't know if uh, the attendees can hear you okay, then maybe it's something uh, with me, but it just sounds like it's going in and out. Okay. Um, well, since this is recorded, if anybody does have any questions and can't hear everything I'm saying, I do have contact information at the end. Right. So please feel free to email me and call me and I'll I'll stick on that page for a couple of seconds. All right. Thanks. Um keep going. Okay, thank you. So this is an example of an Excel spreadsheet that's used to analyze the pricing. Uh, you would just build your description per the rows and your unit of measure times the unit price in the book times a flat factor and the line total. So in this case, in this example, it'd be $2,480. This is an example that I like to show you want to build these in Excel so you can do what you need to do to calculate your adjustment factor. So some tips for being a successful job contractor, you want to bid correctly. You want to anticipate the type of work that the city expects to complete. The Department of Water Management is going to have a completely different set of projects than the Department of Aviation. So you want to anticipate what kind of work is involved. It really depends on, it really depends on the contract. At the pre-bid meeting, there are slides detailing the general type of scope. However, there are no projects identified. You want to analyze those prices in the CTC versus your costs, run a lot of sample projects, and then determine those factors for what is going to cover your overhead and profit. And then obviously you want to staff correctly too. The bid factors and the quality of staff are the two biggest performance measurables that we've seen in the past, whether or not you can meet the performance standards in the contract. So you want to get involved. You want to look in the DPS website. You want to give me a call or shoot me an email. You want to analyze the job programs in the Chicago area and other areas that you're willing to work because we are nationwide. You want to identify those programs that relates to your work. For prime contractors, you want to analyze the prices in the CTC and make sure your adjustment factors fit to what those prices are. And then for subcontractors, you want to establish that relationship with those primes that currently have job contracts. So again, this is just a review and key point. Um, JOC is an established procurement system used by several different types of public agencies. Those are the five steps in a simplified 35 to 45 day process. JOC really is beneficial for all parties, whether it's the owner, the prime or subcontractors. And that performance is based on that contracting system that we've covered several times. And then for subcontractors, just be aware of the methods to submit a quote to contractors and be ready to perform at a high level. These are the departments with the JOC program currently. I'm not going to read through all of them, but since this is being recorded, you will have the opportunity to see this the screen. And then the Chicago land area JOC programs, there's a list there. Um, it is just for informational purposes only. This is a City of Chicago Department of Procurement presentation, so we're not going to answer any questions on these today. Um, but certainly you can look on these websites and find their solicitations and advertisements as well. And then to find out more information, which applies to all the city contracts, 
sign up for those DPS alerts because those are really important. You'll see every solicitation that goes on the street, not just Jock. And you want to check out their procurement website. You want to go to that website there um, and look up their current bids and requests for proposal. And then they still advertise in the Chicago Tribune, so you want to check that out as well. So I do apologize if my mic was going in and out through that process. Uh, if you have any questions after going through this recording, my name is Michael Judd again. I'm the senior account manager on behalf of the city of Chicago. And that's my email, m.judd at gordian.com. And my phone number is 312-489-7277. Again, I do apologize and appreciate your time. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you so much, Michael. And um, Michael has given this presentation before. So um, where I said that you can go on YouTube.com, any parts that went in and out, you can always check uh, in, in his previous uh, workshops just to uh, see if you can get that, that piece of the sound. Uh, that might have gone in and out. It could have been just something on my side. I don't know. But um, anyway, uh, if you have questions for Michael or Jonna, uh, feel free to put them in the Q and A uh, area. We will take open it up to take all questions uh, at this time. Just go to your Q and A. Uh, area, which is in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you do not see Q and a, um, click on the 3 dots, you'll get a menu and then click on Q and a from the menu. Go ahead and type in your question um, before we uh, take any questions that might be in the Q and a area. Um, just let me say that I have. Uh, forwarded through the chat area to all of you a copy of where you can find the uh, Michael's presentation um, and you can find uh, um, information um, regarding uh, the uh, YouTube uh, recordings that we have in there as well. And then last but not least, we will be having a construction summit. Uh, which is going to be in February. So if you are interested in that, um, as I stated before, feel free to sign up for DPS alerts uh, and you will be alerted as soon as we get the official date when it will be. Uh, and you will get more information about the speakers and the opportunities that you will be able to visit with uh, government entities uh, regarding construction. With that said, let me just check and see if there are any um, questions uh, that uh, we have not and there is not. Any questions in the Q&A panel? Um, I will just open it up to Michael and Jana uh, if they want to just say any last parting words um, and maybe someone might, uh, uh, you know, get uh, some idea of a question that they might have. If not, um, we'll just let them do the parting words and I will thank uh, both of them for appearing today and uh, uh, going through the workshop and giving you information on how uh, this particular program works in, uh, with uh, the Department of Procurement Services and how it will benefit you. So, Michael, if you wanted to um, uh, unmic yourself in anything that you would like to just give them last minute tips or information regarding the job program, feel free to go and do that. Sure. Thank you, Jackie, again, and the Department of Procurement. Um, as I mentioned, please give me a call or shoot me an email. I'll be certainly happy to help and uh, try to get you involved more in Jock. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Great. Jana, did you want to give any uh, last words as well? Uh, same for me. Please feel free to reach out via phone or email if you have any questions. I am here to assist as well. 
Thank you, Jana. Um, well, we will just end it here. I think we've had a good uh, discussion uh, regarding how you can be involved with DPS in the JOC program. Um, again, their information is online and uh, it will be up. Uh, this uh, tape will be up by Friday. And um, I will say thank you for attending. We'll see you at the next one. Be safe, be well, and hopefully we will see you in February at the Construction Summit. Thank you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks.